Janet ain't thinking about me. I can't think that much about Janet. So, you know, I don't, I don't get it. And so yeah. that's why I, I reject it on levels that don't necessarily have to do with what's happening itself. But my, my sadness, and I know we're using that word probably to mean empathy um, for the situation, but my sadness uh, part of it surrounds people being distracted and allowing themselves to be distracted because they're miserable in other ways with the economy, right. with jobs, with with potential loss of health care. And so it's just so easy for us to get caught up in someone else's drama, especially people who have money, because we're like, oh, my God, they're going through this. And, oh, I would never do that to my baby's mom. And look what this one did. And, oh, she deserved <laughs> that because she was a strip hoe and blah, blah, blah. And so we get wrapped up in all of these opinions but who's thinking about that child? That's where my focus always goes back to. This is someone's child who's going to have to deal with this. And I hear that. And I, you know, I certainly 100% agree about, um, I think the child's name is Dream. I think that's her name. Um, yeah, I think that, I think there's not a whole lot of thought and consideration given to, to her. Um, but I also have to just speak as a, a a black woman about how easy it is to vilify black women in the media. Um, Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> um, again, I don't know anything about black China. I don't know her, her, what her mama named or what the government name. I don't know her history. Um, but I know, I just can't believe that. Um, so, so as a woman, it's one thing if I, if I'm in a intimate relationship with someone and I choose to share my body or images of my body with that person in the context of a trusted relationship, um, and, and, and in the, in the context of, you know, um, demonstrating your affection and, and, and attraction and, however you want to develop your own sexuality within the context of your intimate relationship. I make no judgment about that. I think every woman has a right to be able to make that choice about it. Um, I don't particularly agree when, when um, celebrities choose to post their own images um, of their naked bodies on social media. That's not my thing. I would never do that. Um, I can be a bit of a prude when it comes to like public displays like that. Just, just as a side note this morning, when I was dropping my daughter off at summer camp, I drove by a man who was in his garden, but just in his boxer shorts. And I felt a way about that. Like it's nine o'clock in the morning. Why are you <laughs> in your front yard and just your boxer shorts? See, That's problematic for me. You see how that, how that American Christianity has got you down <laughs> there in the central standard time zone. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just not okay. Um, put on shorts, like you could put on shorts on top of those boxes. Anyway, I, I certainly digress. But my point is, if Rob Kardashian allegedly posted these pictures of his ex um, online, then he took her power away in doing that. It's one thing to say from a sense of empowerment, whether I understand that or not personally, that I'm going to uh, that a, that a woman will post naked pictures or you know, um, boudoir pictures or whatever of herself online. It's another for someone else to do it to you. Um, and, and that's the truth. Like that's the truth. Yeah, that is, um, that's problematic. I think it's sexist. Um, I think it's violent. Um, and I think that it is probably, um, a compounding sense of feeling demoralized and denigrated to know that that's now being circulated by everyone for everyone for their own use. And then for people to um, feast on that with their own judgment and um, humiliation and insult. Um, I don't know what kind of woman she is, but I can't imagine that that doesn't affect her at all. I, I can't imagine that that's not problematic for her, whether she quote unquote signed up for this celebrity life or not. Now I I'm, need to play devil's advocate. Okay. Because you know, you know, you know, we got, we have to balance this conversation. I believe that what Rob did to Angela Renee White, born May eleventh, nineteen eighty eight, professionally you known it. as Black China. Thank you, Wikipedia. Shout out to <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> you know, I keep some research on the left, but I think what he did to her is horrible. Allegedly. But, 
allegedly horrible. Okay, thank you. Almost got sued in the show that I'm producing. <laughs> but I the question is... I don't have the money for that. But, None you know. of us do. Ain't nobody got money for that. But the question is, um, maybe she deserved it. Now let's so let me let me play hold on. Let me let me play devil's advocate and let me give you that part of Twitterdom that is speaking in support of them. And I'm gonna try and uh just uh con- con- consolidate some of the things that we've been hearing. So maybe if it's true that she had sex with him and then went and had sex with the next guy and sent him a picture that she got what she got. And maybe if it's true that he paid for her uh, breast to be redone after she had a baby and she's flashing it around and has the next person, you know, uh, um, utilizing them or whatever, however you want to phrase that, then maybe she deserves all of that. Maybe that's maybe that's true. You know, there was one person who tweeted out, you know, and I'm not going to use the verbiage he used because I'm trying to keep this as friendly, family friendly as possible. <laughs> but it was something to the effect of he paid for her breast to be redone. And now she has the next man sucking on them. Um, mm. Stay safe out there, kings. And I mean, that really brought me to a pause. Like it brought me to a pause. But because you're the psychologist and I'm the philosopher, and I'm going to look at it from a non-humanist theoretical perspective of you get what you get tit for tat. Is there validity in that? And if so, why not? Okay, so you know there's absolutely no validity in that. That's a that's a non-starter. Maybe. But let's get to the why not. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. This is all problematic. Take a breath. Take a breath before you talk. I know. I'm like, remember, I, don't, I was playing devil's advocate before you, I know, before and you I remember go off. And I still love this <laughs> after the end of this show. Um, because I know these are not your own thoughts, but thoughts of those who may be listening or maybe who need to hear a word, as they say. Um, for me, all of that is still so deeply embedded in an overarching sense of sexism and really misogynism, like hate towards women. So let me let me break it down for you. The fact that a man contributed to the augmentation of a woman's body does not give that man ownership over that woman's body. She is still a human being and still a person with her own uh, thoughts, cognitions, <laughs> wills, feelings, etc. So, um. I don't care what he paid for. It still belongs to another person. And it still is problem, uh, extra problematic, if you will, that you have so little respect for the fact that this woman is now the father, I'm sorry, the mother of your child. Like for me, that's a whole nother level of, of expectation that should come from how you should treat that person. Um, because how you treat the mother of your child is a reflection of how you actually feel about your child. So, and I really need you to please say that again, because I don't think people get that part. I think it's particularly, um, a a blind spot for a lot of men, whether they be men who have status and celebrity or men who are just working a nine to five, trying to make ends meet. How you treat the mother of your child is at the end of the day, a reflection of how you feel about your child, because your child is only an extension of you and that woman. So she was good enough for you to lay down with to make the baby. She needs to be at the very least good enough for you to not disrespect her out in public. And I think that's really important. Because it's not necessarily about him not being angry. And I think I don't want people to think that what we're saying here is he is not entitled to his anger. He is not entitled to his hurt. He's not entitled to his pain. I believe he's entitled to all of that and then some. But let me add another layer. You do. okay? I'm sorry. Go on. Let me add another layer. I also think we have to collectively start having more. Um 
complicated expectations for how people respond to their hurt and anger, right? So right. so I'm also not saying that he needs to be a saint and be like, you know, I turn the other cheek and I uphold her and put her on a pedestal. I'm not saying that. No. But I also need us to recognize that there needs to be a firm line in the sand about how far you can go with your negative reactions to somebody. And for me, allegedly, he crossed a line. And this is where Rest in peace and bless her soul. My grandmother, Lucinda V. Bell, comes into play. Because that woman would always say, keep your business out Mm. these streets. Keep my business out these streets. Like, it was about, if this is your family, and you're talking about these situations, you don't take and put that in the street. Now, if she's sending this stuff to you and you took it and then put it up on Instagram, who then took and shut your account down as well they should because it right. places them in liability and in jeopardy. But if if allegedly these are the things that happen, then you can call her all kinds of names and this and that and the other thing and the third. And I wouldn't necessarily be mad at you. But the minute you take it upon yourself, to expose a person in this way in public. Not only are you showing that you are of low moral fiber, but you are also breaking the damn law. Yeah. And let's get into that for a second, Dr. Nikki. Let's talk about the revenge porn law that he broke, allegedly broke. Allegedly, <laughs> right? So, because... so. This and for me, this is where the the idea that you know this this whole situation is really a reflection of a lot of the sexism that is so ingrained in our society that that revenge porn laws are a thing, um, right? Um, and I'm not saying that women don't engage in revenge porn, but I bet if if I if I looked at the statistics, I bet I would find that men are more likely to be the culprit of it than not. So what is revenge porn? And so right now we have 38 states plus the uh, District of Columbia that have revenge porn laws on the books. Um, And so in order for it to be a criminal um, charge, it has to be um, pictures or videos of another person's intimate body parts with the mutual understanding that such images will be kept confidential. So, again, what you do between you and your your (laughs) bae, your wife, your spouse, your partner, whoever that's fine. Or partners, whatever y'all choose to do together, if it's done with a mutual expectation that these will be kept between you, um, then that's fine. That's not the that's not the problem. But when you begin to distribute the images without that person's consent, and the expectation is that distributing the images is with the intention to cause serious emotional distress to the person. That's when we have revenge porn. And that's when it becomes a criminal offense. Now, by and large, um, most of the state's um, laws have it as a a class one misdemeanor, by and large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't know what happens um, because you talked about it being like maybe a federal issue, because I don't know if it changes because it was via Instagram, which is now worldwide. Right. So, well, that's the thing. I mean, there, uh, um, the latest I read on the story in preparation for our show today was that her lawyers are looking at all options. And because it was disseminated over the internet, they may try the angle that it breaks federal law, mm. which is a, is a different case, a different scenario. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. You know, dissemination of porn, period could be local, could be state, could be, you know, national. I'm not really that versed in how that all works or Mm -hmm. um, how that would be defined. However, this could be a case to look at in the future in terms of how that's um, true. People interact with each other and how they go online and post these things. I mean, let's let's take a, a step back for a couple of weeks and look at the young lady who coerced her boyfriend to oh kill God. himself. Yes. Yes. And a lot of people were, were saying, oh, well, you know, he should have been of stronger character and he had problems and he should have this and he should have that. But 
when they went over these texts and he said, I.